Look at that, more Ua! But today we're gonna talk about the Druid. Welcome to Pack Tactics, where we cast Conjure Animals so the eight puppies overwhelm our enemies. Just like Paladin, I'm just gonna talk about the important stuff. Let's start with something interesting. Druids no longer get proficiency in medium armor. This is actually a boost because you can pick up the lightly armored feet and wear metal armor now. In the old version, you couldn't wear metal armor at all. I would prefer them to actually give me the proficiencies anyways, but I do like this change. It's better than the old version. As in the previous changes to spellcasting classes, Druids now have less flexibility in their spell preparation. As you prepare a number of spells of each level equal to the slots you have at that level. This might be a decent nerf to casters, but I hope they decrease the power of some of the oppressive control spells too. Now for the feature druids are known for, Wild Shape. It's changed substantially. First, instead of using Wild Shape charges to Wild Shape and do other stuff, you get a feature called Channel Nature, which over time allows you to do a variety of things. This also means you get wild shape at level 1 instead of 2. The way its charges work were changed just like Paladin's Channel Divinity. You now gain back only one charge on a short rest. I still don't like that. Anyways, the language used here implies that you do not keep your proficiencies when changing form. I'm probably wrong, and they might not actually be features, but if so, this really should be cleaned up. 5e does this way better. Look at the differences. You should pause it because I, I'm gonna move on now. Interestingly enough, Druid Wild Shape now allows you to use a generic stat block and you get to flavor it to whatever you like. I do kind of like this idea. Flavor is free. Though the stat blocks themselves fall a bit flat. Also, your choice of appearance does not seem to be flavor only entirely. Even though it says the appearance you choose has no effect on the form's capabilities. It also says your ability to handle objects is determined by the form's limbs, which makes it optimal to pick something like a monkey to get hands and such. I do think it's cool that you can mix. By the way, owl bears are now raw, just in time for the movies. Now you can't complain about that. You may have noticed they moved the levels of a few features. Druids used to be able to take form of a creature with a swimming speed at level 4. Now it's at level 7. Flying speed used to be at level 8. Now it's at 9. I do think the delay for swimming speed is stupid. Just make it 3 or 4. Another part of this is that all options allow you to choose between small, medium, and large by default. But Tiny is gated until level 11. When choosing Tiny, there are even a few more restrictions on it. At level 1, this is a huge nerf to the Druid's scouting ability, which I'd say, fair enough. Let's not outshine the rogue immediately, you know? But it quickly becomes apparent that this was not thought through too much, which I'll explain when I talk about nature's aid. Now for the biggest changes to Wild Shape, the way in which the forms work. Yes, most of your abilities get replaced with the stat block, but your hit points don't anymore. That is a massive nerf to druids. Previously, Wild Shape worked as a sort of HP buffer, meaning damage would not eat your own HP, just those of the form you transformed into. And that's not all, your AC gets reduced massively, and you become super duper squishy, literally the opposite of how it worked in 5e. It's actually a massive danger to transform because you're setting yourself up for failure. A big issue with Wild Shape in 5e is that it just does not start off well and it scales terribly. Its saving grace were that you could use it to scout. It worked as an HP buffer and could be used for mobility. Now the saving grace is gone besides the mobility. At this phase, I don't think they want you to fight in the animal form anymore. Now, let me be clear. I don't think druids should be able to outdo an actual martial character. But currently, Wild Shape literally just makes you worse at fighting than staying normal. You do worse or similar damage when using cantrips. And you have worse defenses. That is a 
big flaw in design. One thing I've seen people complain about, and I, I personally don't really mind this, is that quite a few levels of Druid are taken up by wild shaped features. But if you look at the actual differences, it has basically only gained features, and the rest was moved from being part of the wild shaped text. So I don't think it's that big of a deal. One that I kind of like the idea of, maybe not in execution, is alternating forms. This basically lets you go back and forth without using channel nature. But it would be so much cooler if you could swap for the wild shape's entire duration, especially with how hit points currently work. We gotta move on. They moved the subclasses to level 3. You know that I don't like this. With a lot of classes, it makes more sense that you have to decide your path when you pick your class. Not a few levels in. Next is Nature's Aid. This gives you two more options for your channel nature charges. First up, Healing Blossoms. Similar to Bard and Cleric, Druids now get to use their main class resource to heal allies. If you have a plus 5 Wisdom modifier, you can heal someone for a maximum of 20 HP. Though it looks like you're supposed to be considering sharing the hit points across multiple people. It doesn't look like they're making healing much better in 1 D&D. I guess you have some funny click clacks, but... It is kind of a joke how little this actually heals. Remember, 20 is the actual maximum with plus 5 wisdom. I really dislike this joke of a feature. Next is Wild Companion, which you may recognize as it's similar to its version in Tashes. However, the familiar now disappears after a long rest, instead of a few hours. But that's not all for the changes in this feature, as Find Familiar actually got some massive changes too. Let's take a look at the spell. Like Find Steed, which I talked about in my video on Paladin, you now get a generic stat block, which with a few choices. And you can flavor the animal to whatever you want. Personally, I'm fine with the change. I'm a bit disappointed to see that the stat blocks don't get proficiency in stealth or perception. Remote viewing works at any range now, and it still outscouts a rogue, as this is a safer option than sending in a party member to potentially be slaughtered. Which is why I think putting Tiny Critter at level 11 is stupid. Some other big changes are that you can no longer continuously plop your familiar in and out of a safe pocket dimension. It instead only goes there if it faints, if we use Pokemon terms. After an hour or if you recast a spell, it returns, meaning you basically never have to recast a spell even. While this is definitely a big nerf for the spell, it's probably good that it's not as strong as it used to be. This does remove some cool tech I like. If you want to know more about that, watch Gator's Misty Step video. I think it's a bit stupid the way some parts of the spell are now based on the level you cast the spell. The two times spell level hit points is not going to make much of a difference 99% of the time, as the familiar will most likely just die to one hit anyways. Deliver spell has remained mostly unchanged. Let's speed run the remaining levels, basically pizza time. Level 16, Wild Resurgence, which is such a small boon at this point, and is close to useless if you remember how little Healing Blossoms actually does, especially at this level. At level 17, you get Beast Spells instead of level 18. Previously, you couldn't cast spells with material components at all. Now you can. That's nice. Capstone, Archdruid, was absolutely gutted. You used to get infinite wild shapes, and I guess they didn't want to change that into infinite channel natures, as that would mean infinite healing. Time for Moondruid. I never really liked Moondruid because it was only good at tier 1, and then it fell flat later on. Now it just sucks everywhere. Now, serious playtest business. Currently, the wording for its big level 3 feature is messed up. You get a feature called Combat Wild Shapes which gives you benefits while transformed using Wild Shape. But Wild Shape disallows you to use any of your features. The way it's currently worded, you can only use Quick Attack outside of Wild Shape. I think we all understand the intent here, but they gotta fix that up. 
Anyways, Moon Druid isn't any better at surviving in melee now than any other druid, as they removed their ability to become stronger creatures. Anyways, here are the abjuration spells that the druid have access to by default without material components. And as you can see, this is a pathetic list. Finally, you get transform as a bonus action, which means you can attack on the turn you change shape. But I don't recommend you use this because Wild Shape will get you killed. And this Moon Druid feature is not helping you very much. You still suck at combat. Level 6, Elemental Wild Shape. Previously, Moon Druids got to overcome resistances and immunities to non-magical attacks and damage at this level. I think overall, this is going to be a net nerf if we consider how this affects your damage. The previous version basically allowed you to overcome everything. But here you pick the element, and if you happen to pick the wrong element, the creature might then be resistant or immune to it. And that will translate to less damage, obviously. Now, to be fair, this will be more useful for of vulnerabilities, but that doesn't come up very often. Resistances and immunities do come up very often, but I don't think this is a bad change. I think 1D&D will do away with resistances to non-magical damages. Anyways, resistances are of course welcome, and luckily you don't need to attack using fire damage when getting resistant to fire. Level 10 is a joke feature. It doesn't improve your quick attack. While it does improve bestial strike, it's like 1.7 75 DPR if we assume an average of 17 AC at level 10 and a plus 5 wisdom modifier. If we assume 19 AC at level 17, this feature adds about 2.8 DPR total. It, yeah. <laughs> It sucks. And then there's the level 14 feature. I know this is the same as in 5e, but I really wish they would do something more. Like, I don't think this fits with the idea of transforming into various animals very well. But if they really want to keep it this way, please make it not require concentration, at least. It's not a good spell, and I'm level 14. Overall, I'm less happy with this than Paladin, and they definitely messed up big time in some elements of Wild Shape. And basically everything involving the Moon Druid. I'm very disappointed at the lack of revisions of the Druid spells, like Conjure Animals. Let's be honest here, 99% of the Druid's power is in the spells itself. Such a massive portion of the class is missing, so I can't tell if this class is fine or hot trash. Well, that's all I had to say about Druid. Anyways, bye bye